Hi, I'm Doug from Dynamic Computing and welcome to episode 90 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Now I love accelerating my Amigas, you guys know that. Um, making them as fast as I possibly can. Now, some people frown on this and they think, oh, you gotta stay original, you gotta, it's a 68,000 chip with 512 kilobytes of RAM and one floppy. That's the only way to run an Amiga. I say, forget about it. Even back in the 80s, I wanted to accelerate the daylights out of my Amiga 500. I drooled over every accelerator that was out there, every little speed up, every RAM expansion, every hard drive expansion. That's what I wanted in my Amiga to make it bigger, better, faster, more. Now, here we are in 2021, and we can do that for a pretty reasonable price. From the low-end entry-level accelerators like the Terrible Fire T534 I talked about last week, uh, to the higher-end T536 for less than 200 bucks for either of them. Uh, and then Individual Computers has some great accelerators for the Amiga 500 and Amiga 1200. Uh, there's new 060 cards coming out for the Amiga 1200 in a who knows when, couple months. Uh, and then of course there's the ubiquitous vampire that everybody knows and either loves or hates. Reasonably priced to make your Amigas fly. All of these things, these modern solutions, have one thing in common that drives me nuts, and that is the lack of a header for the hard drive LED light. I, I don't even know what they're thinking. You know, you, you, you've got maybe this little microscopic LED on the board itself that little flickers when the hard drive is, is active, but our cases are closed, people. We can't see that light. How hard would it have been just to put a little two pin header right on your board so we could just, you know, and I'm like a checkmate case like this little beauty right here or an Amiga 2000. Just boom, plug in the hard drive LED light and we're just off and running. But nope, drives me nuts not knowing what my hard drive is doing. I'll launch a program, maybe it takes five, six seconds to launch. Did I click it? Did I double click? I don't know, I can't tell. There's no hard drive activity light. I just wait and you can't hear the things. I mean, my checkmate case, totally silent. I don't even know the thing's on except for the uh, power light. So I popped online to find a solution, see what other people are doing. And believe it or not, as far as Amiga solutions, there wasn't that much out there. A few people talked about it a little bit, but there was no, this is how it's done type of tutorial for doing this until I found a video from a while back from our pal Chris Edwards uh, right here, where he talked about adding a hard drive LED light to a vampire. So I took his video, learned how to do it, and I want to show you how to do it too. This should work on any 44 pin, two and a half inch drive hard drive interface. It also works fine on the 40 pin hard drive interface. The actual activity pin is the same on both, just where you get power is where it really changes. Let's take a look inside my beautiful Checkmate case, which is running a vampire right now with this gorgeous picture, which was one of the winners from the Amiga Art Contest 2020 from our good friend Kevin Saunders called Half Bright Fish. Pretty cool, huh? Here we are inside the case, and here is the uh, vampire right here. Now, this has thingamabobs and doodads and whatever else uh, Ariel has in her room. It also has a interface right on here, a 44 pin IDE interface. Now I use a, a disk on module from our friends Amiga on the Lake. You can see their logo right here. Let me pop that off. Cute little eight gigabyte uh, module plugs right in. Now we just have to locate where pin one is. Let's get the vampire out and take a closer look at it. Taking a closer look at this little guy, you can see all kinds of headers for the ethernet module and the JTAG module, HDMI, broken SD card that I broke because I'm an idiot, uh, the RAM, everything else like that. But there's no pins to put an LED on here. It does have a 44 pin IDE interface. Notice pin one starts here. This board is labeled. Be careful, some boards are not too clearly labeled. So when we're counting pins, we need to make sure you start from pin one. Now, the activity light that we want to grab a signal for is on pin 39 of both the 44 pin two and a half inch drive interface and the 40 pin standard size IDE interface. 
and you can count to that by starting at one here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and count up, or you can just count backwards. So we'll figure this is pin 44, that's 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39. We can locate where pin 39 is. That's where we want to grab a signal from. Now, if you use your own LED, like this one right here, I picked this up for maybe a buck, buck and a half. I'm not going to be using it. Generally, the colored cable is generally positive or anode, and the, the white cable, or sometimes it's black, is usually the negative or the cathode. Uh, that's not always the truth, but it usually is. Now, as far as the wires go that we're going to use, that we're going to connect up to, it all depends on how your situation is. Now, on the, on the Checkmate case, if we can take a quick peek here, do 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 zoom 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 what we have is a male header here so we would want to use something like this to plug into the male header okay and then we're going to connect the other end of this cable up to pin 39 and to power if you have an existing hard drive LED, like on an Amiga 2000, you're going to have an LED light already there with a female connector like this, uh, all ready to connect up to a board, okay? In that case, pick yourself up a cable like this. I picked this up for about a buck and a half, and it is a male connector that I'm going to trim the ends off and solder onto my board, and then, your hard drive LED cable plugs right into there, you're happy as a clam. So depending on your LED light depends on what kind of cable you're gonna get, male or female. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one end of this cable and I wanna solder the positive or the red cable onto pin 39 on here. So I'm just going to snip this off. I'm gonna leave the other side on for the time being and I'll strip off a little wire on here and I will solder this to 44, 43, 42, 40, 1, 40, 39. This pin right here very carefully. And remember, the device still has to plug into this, so you want to do it way at the bottom as delicately as possible so it does not interfere with plugging the drive in. You also want to be careful not to bridge any connections here or to miscount and do it on the wrong end. Now, chances are you won't break anything if you do that. It just won't work. It literally won't boot. So be careful and triple check yourself. Now, I'm going to not videotape the soldering because I'm such an expert at soldering, I don't want to put Put all my friends on YouTube to shame with the quality of my soldering skills. So I had to change things up just a little bit. My original plan was to grab five volt power from the uh, for the, the the LED from the Berg connector over here from the floppy drive. Grab five volts from there. So I measured it out. Grab five volts. Uh, hooked it up along with my little resistor. Uh, I used, like I said, the 220 ohm resistor and I wasn't getting any hard drive activity light. So I had to go back to the other way of doing it, which is soldering to pin 42. So if you recall, when we were looking at the vampire and we were counting pins, we've got 39, pin 39 over here. Then we've got the other end, pin 42, which supplies uh, five volt power. Then I just put the 220 ohm resistor. You may want to use a 330 ohm resistor, but I like the brightness of the 220. Put that in line right here, wrapped it up nice and neat in some electrical tape, and then hooked the entire thing right up to the vampire. Now, let's see if she works. Now, will it work? We'll apply some power to the vampire. We've got our vampire screen. Will we get hard drive? Oh my goodness, we have hard drive activity light. That will make this so much more useful. Look at that. It's a little bright, but it's just fine. I can change that resistor if I want to. And she boots right up with the hard drive light. Just to uh, put a fine point on it. 
if you're using a system like uh, uh, Amiga 2000 that already has a hard drive LED and a, a female connector, use one of these male connectors, hook it up to pin 39 and pin 42, uh, put a 220 to 330 ohm resistor on uh, the line on pin 42. If you have something like the Checkmate where you can plug it directly into the front of the case, use one of these female connectors and do the same thing. Works pretty slick. Now while we're inside the case, you see I've got this HDMI cable leading from the Vampire and it generally goes out through one of the holes in the back there and plugs into my monitors. That's not the optimal solution. So my friend David Z in Arizona here printed me this 3D printed uh, cover that fits right in the back of the Checkmate case. And you see it has one little connector here for the Ethernet jack. The Ethernet jack just plugs in and I'm just going to get some little uh, L-shaped uh, brackets here to screw it in, but it's actually nice and snug in there. It snaps right in, hasn't come out at all. And the second one is for HDMI. So I got this little HDMI uh, male on one end, female on the other with a couple little screw holes in it that should mount right up beautifully in the case. Let's see how that looks. And look at that little beauty. We've got the nice little HDMI cable running right to the back there. And then in the back, we have Ethernet and HDMI in our Vampire. Much better than cables just hanging out the back of the unit. Now, I've got something similar for the Amiga 1000 that David Z also printed me. Thank you, David. This replaces the back plate on the Amiga 1000 that's 3D printed. And you see everything's labeled here, a composite, TV modulator, expansion, etc., etc. But it adds HDMI and VGA and uh, Ethernet right here. And uh, USB also. So that's actually really cool. I have not put this on yet because I am uh, concerned about taking my Amiga 1000 apart. Um, but the cool thing is, is this is just a direct replacement and the original can just be stored away if we ever want to restore it to its original beauty. I'll try this out in a few weeks. Well, not too shabby, really. Figure $5 worth of parts, maybe 15 minutes worth of time once we figured out exactly where all the connectors go. Um, and we've got a hard drive activity light on our checkmated vampire right now. And uh, she works just perfectly. Um, now, if you have an Amiga 2000 or something like that, you've got an LED light on there, no problem at all. If you have an Amiga 500 or an Amiga 1000, like my vampire is the Amiga 1000 right here, they don't have LED lights for hard drive activity. But what I'm thinking is, just get one of the standard little LEDs that you can get at almost any electronic shop. And then what you can do is either hot glue or double-sided tape it up underneath where the, uh, uh, the wedge part where the grill is. So the light shines right up through there. You'll see it just fine. Run it out through the back of the case, put it right on the top. I'm sure that there's some nice little 3D things that you can print that just snap right in there, right on the top, no problem at all. On the Amiga 1000, I'm thinking about looking what I can do with the um, LED here, or maybe the floppy LED, and tap into that, or maybe put another LED there that shines through there. See what I can do to get an LED working in that machine too. Thanks so much to my wonderful patrons. I really appreciate it. And special thanks to Matthews. Steinsu. I'm sure I butchered that name. He's the one that originally gave me the idea to look into a, a solution for the vampire for getting an LED light. He had a little different idea of a little PCB that fits in there. I'm going to look more into that, but this absolutely does work. So thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. If you want to join this illustrious list of fantastic people, pop on by to patreon.com forward slash 10 mark. Little as two bucks a month. You're on the list, buddies. Thanks. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm up to about uh, almost 4,200 subscribers now. Really appreciate it, guys. You guys are the best. Uh, follow me on Twitter. That's where I spend a lot of my time talking about cool retro stuff. But until next time, this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast signing out. <laughs>